Hi everybody, Ben here from Clare.io. I'm going to show you how to take a STL file or an OBJ file and then render it so it looks like this. This is great for um, if you're showcasing your work on a 3D printing site. I actually um, uh, replicated this rendering from this render here that was created by Redbeard to showcase his clumsy dragon model. Um, so uh, the way I started with this is I first I downloaded this from Thingiverse. I just clicked download this thing. I found the model I wanted and I downloaded it and I put it on my desktop. Then what I did is I created a new scene inside Clare.io. I just let's start with an empty scene here. I then took my model and I just dragged and dropped it into the Clara UI. And then there it'll upload quickly. Then it'll import. And then it will download into the browser. So there we go. We've just imported this. Um, so this model is actually quite large. Um, you can see that it's quite large relative to the um, this grid here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the object and I'm going to go into the transform and scale. And I know that I want to actually make it a thousand times smaller. So I'm just going to go into there and set that. Now, whoops. And now if I go over to each viewport, I can hit F and it's going to center them. When I hit the W key while I have the object selected, it goes in the transform mode. I'm going to align this object with the um, zero uh, Y um, plane. And I'm going to hit F again, and that's going to um, level it. So I'm going to first set up the scene. Um, when I'm setting up a scene like this, I want to have a plane uh, as the ground plane. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a camera. I'm going to create a camera via aligning the camera in this viewport the way I want it to be, which is Let's see. Roughly, um, it's going to be parallel to the head, and we're going to see the tail over the top. So that's roughly parallel to the tail, and that's that's not a bad um, position. Right there. Okay. Now that this is what I want, I'm going to click on the plus here, and I'm going to create a view camera. It creates a view camera exactly in the location that I'm currently looking. So I can go to that camera here, and I can go to that camera here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two V-Ray materials. Um, and I'm going to assign them to both uh, the uh, solid object and the ground plane. So I'm just click over here on the material library and I'm going to go new, V-Ray standard, and I'm going to create a second V-Ray standard as well. The first one I'm going to call VR white, and the second one is VR gray. So I'm going to take the plane and I'm going to assign it to the gray, and it's actually got a pretty good gray already. I might make it slightly darker than it is. And then this, I'm going to grab the dragon. I'm going to drag the dragon on the VR white. It starts with a default gray. Let's make that much brighter. Let's make that somewhere up here. Okay. Um, one interesting thing about STL files is um, they're actually very inefficient meshes. Um, this mesh here, you'll see it has 50,000 polygons, but it has 150,000 vertices. The reason for that is it actually is duplicating the vertices. I mean, it's not sharing them between faces. Um, we can get, we can reduce this mesh quite a bit, and it'll be easier to work with in Clario if, if we get rid of that duplication. The way you do that is you use the clean poly mesh operator, and then you click remove duplicate vertices, and watch this vertex count. It has 150,000. We click remove duplicate vertices. It drops down to 25,000. So we've just uh, really reduced the memory footprint of this mesh, and any operation we do on it now will be more efficient. The second thing I'm going to do to this STL to make it um, look better is if I zoom in, you'll notice it's faceted right now. That's because there's no normal information in this STL file. I'm going to add normals. I'm going to click on, uh, the easiest way actually, is if I come over to the tools, and I click on the auto smooth button while I have my mesh selected. And then a moment later, it's uh, updated the normals and now it's smooth everywhere, but where there's sharp edges, they're still preserved. That's because auto smooth averages the normals of adjacent faces, except uh, when the faces have an angle between them that exceeds this threshold. And, and 30 is a really good threshold. So now that we've got that, the last part that we want to um, fix up of our scene is to make sure that our background plane, which currently stops right there, is like this background plane, which I can tell actually is a curved surface that extends upwards. So we're going to sub uh, poly edit uh, our plane here. I'm first going to make sure that it actually has enough uh, vertices for us to play with. I've, I've made four segments in each direction for a total of 16. I'm going to go to the polygon, or sorry, the vertex editing mode, and I'm going to grab the back row of vertices, and I'm just going to drag them up, way up, high enough that um, it's out of our way. Now, this actually leads to um, a very faceted look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mesh smooth on that. I'm just going to control plus. 
a few times, and that's going to make the background very nicely smooth. Um, and I'm going to just move the background back um, ever so slightly. And I'm going to rotate that so it's parallel, um, the, the background uh, panel there is parallel to my view in the camera. And I notice it doesn't quite extend as far as we want it to, so I'm just going to go to scale. I'm just going to scale it out a bit. There we go. That is what we're looking for. Okay, the last thing to do um, before we hit render is to set up the lighting. Um, when I look at this model, I can tell that there's really no, no hard shadows anywhere. Um, that actually looks almost like an area light. So let's try an area light. An area light sort of replicates the outdoor lighting on a cloudy day. It's, it's sort of coming from everywhere above. The way we create a hemispheric light, or a dome light, is you click on the Lights tab, and then you click on the V-Ray Dome. Um, by default, it's sort of a blue on the top. Let's change that to a bright white. And the ground color in V-Ray doesn't matter, so we're just going to set that somewhere dark. And, I don't know, somewhere around 1 intensity might be good. Let's render this now. As soon as you click Render, it uh, a number of other settings for V-Ray are automatically created, including the render and the current pass. That's more for advanced users, um, but this should be sufficient for our needs. There we go. That's looking roughly right. I think we still need to be brighter on the dome light. Let's bring that up. Very close. Um, the other thing we can do is change some of the object's materials to be a bit more realistic. We can add an ever so slight um, reflection on uh, the white to give it a slightly porcelain look. 070707. That's pretty close. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower our total uh, ambient um, uh, light. So I'm coming to uh, the viewer render and I'm going to its environment color and I'm just lowering that a bit. And the last thing I want to do is, um, whoops, default, just adjust the camera in ever so slightly. So that it fills the frame. That's roughly right. So once you've got uh, an angle um, and the lighting that you're looking for, the next thing to do, um, or the final way to do a render, is just to click uh, make it maximize the viewport and then go with the standard render. And then that will um, uh, do a high quality render at the at a large resolution. And then you can just, once it's done, you can click here to save the image. Let's wait till it finishes. Um, I'm using the premium renderer here. It's got 40 cores and you can see that it really chews through images quickly. When we blow it up like this, you can see the, the nice ceramic, uh, slight ceramic look that we're getting here. And that really emphasizes the details in this beautiful bottle. There we go. We've completed our render. And I'm just going to save that. And there we go. Okay, I hope that's useful um, to you in creating uh, beautiful renders of your solid models. Thanks for your time.